Well, joining us from Dubai is Rabbi Dr. Eli Abadi, the rabbi of the Association of Gulf Jewish Communities. Rabbi Abadi, thank you for joining us. Pesach Sameach, happy Passover. Chag Sameach, happy holiday. Well, uh, of course, there have been Jews in Dubai in years past. I know there were Seder celebrations, I imagine, in private homes, but this year, I imagine, is something different. What are we going to see in terms of the Seder meal, especially in a more sort of public atmosphere? Well, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me uh, this evening to your program, Pesach Sameach, Tiskul Shanim Rabot, and uh, Happy Passover. It's exciting uh, for us Jews now living in the in the Gulf countries, uh, specifically myself here in Dubai, uh, celebrating uh, Passover with the community. Um, it's, uh, it's it's a momentous occasion in which uh, we can celebrate openly, of course, and not only here, but in the many uh, Gulf countries where uh, our association of uh, Gulf Jewish communities has uh, distributed over 650 pounds of masa plus uh, plus wine grape juice and whatever necessary for uh, for the families to celebrate Passover um, we would have had a, a greater participation from Jews all over the world had it not been because of the COVID regulations worldwide but we have at least three programs three hotel programs with uh, many people participating participating from local areas and also from from around the world but as i said we were had expecting also over 10 to 12 uh, programs uh, around December, this past December, we were looking for that. But given the COVID regulations, as I said, uh, those have been reduced to three programs in Dubai and one program in Abu Dhabi, one or two programs in Abu Dhabi. Right. Now, of course, uh, there have been more, say, kosher options been made available there in Dubai and in some of the other places we just discussed. But of course, Passover for uh, observant Orthodox Jews is a sort of challenging week, even in a country country like Israel to abide by the various dietary restrictions, no, ab absolutely no bread products and total separate dishes. What about there in Dubai? How easy or not is it to observe for an observant Jew to observe the, the Passover week there? Well, we have uh, two to three uh, kosher caterers, and they're all uh, kosher la Pesach, so, uh, so that is going to be easy for the people to participate in the programs. Uh, we have uh, kosher food that have been brought from the United States and also from Israel, imported and distributed to, to many of the families that want to celebrate Passover by themselves or, or with their close family. So, yeah, it's not, it's not like living in Israel, of course, and it's not like living in New York or in Miami. Miami or in major in London and major Jewish uh, uh, communities, where you could go almost to the corner and find kosher kosher uh, food or even kosher la pesach food. But here we had to plan it uh, a month in advance, if not more than that, to make sure that we get the food on time and it's distributed to the families that uh, that are that that requested it. So, uh, but it's as I said, it's exciting because uh, we have. Uh, Several people who uh, want me to sell their hametz, and tomorrow I'll be conducting the ceremony of selling the hametz to a, a dear uh, a local Emirati friend who will be uh, the owner of the hametz of the entire Jewish community here and also in the Gulf. Right. I just want to explain to our non-Jewish viewers, or maybe some of our Jewish viewers, that means celebrating the, uh, you could say, sort of the bread or bread-related products symbolically to a non-Jew, since Jews can only eat the unleavened bread, the matzah, uh, during the, the holiday. I want to ask you maybe a little uh, spiritually a question, because Passover is a probably a holiday of all the ones deals, especially with Jews living in the diaspora abroad. It's about the sort of journey of Jews from out of Egypt eventually making their way to the land of Israel. Uh, and I would guess it would have kind of a special meaning, especially in Mideast communities like yours for Jews living there. Could you talk a little about that? Of course. Uh, look, uh, I, I, I was born in Beirut, Lebanon. I grew up till age 10 in, in that country. My family are from Syria. Um, and I know many of uh, my co-religionists from Egypt, from, uh, from Lebanon, from Tunis, from Algeria, from Morocco. So for many of them, and even from Egypt itself, as I said, so for many of them uh, in those days uh, in which there was a Jewish community in those countries uh, dating back uh, 50 to 70 years, 
years and more. Uh, yes, it was something um, uh, you know different and and if not strange, but but interesting. Now being back in in in, in an Arab country that is so welcoming and so uh, eager to help us uh, celebrate Judaism, celebrate the Jewish holidays. It's uh, nostalgic for me, but it's also very deeply touching to be able to celebrate it in, in a country like here that welcomed us, that wants us to to uh, to be successful as a Jewish community, that want us to grow. But uh, the text of the Haggadah will always remain the same. You know, this year we are here, next year uh, in Jerusalem. So uh, that is the text that we have been reciting for over 2,000 years. And uh, we'll continue to recite that text no matter where we are in the world. Right. Now, you mentioned welcoming from the community there. Uh, have there been some sort of official, I don't know if to say blessings or congratulations from the authorities there in Dubai and the UAE on this holiday? Something that certainly would be perhaps different uh, than previous years. Well, uh, many of the, those congratulatory, congratulatory statements have been told to me and have been texted to me by, by, by officials here. And I'm sure there will be a, an official uh, uh, statement in the next few days. Right. Yes. Right. Uh, and looking ahead, I want to look ahead to the Passover a holiday. You said because of the coronavirus restrictions, you were expecting much more. Is this something that you anticipate? Uh, Israeli, sir, I can just imagine a year from now when these restrictions are lifted, how many Israelis might want to be spending their Passover holiday there in Dubai, perhaps also uh, in the be it at Abu Dhabi in Bahrain as well. Well, looking just at uh, at the time in which the doors were widely open in December, January, we had uh, some estimated at 100,000 Israelis were here. So I am very sure that the next year in Passover and even before next year, as soon as uh, as the skies open up in Israel and, and here and uh, we're going to have... Uh, Israeli tourists and Jewish tourists from all over the world in the thousands, if not in the tens of thousands. I am sure of that. Right. And uh, very briefly, just in a, just a couple of words, the general situation, the mood in the Jewish community there on the eve of Passover. It's very hopeful, very happy, uh, very, uh, very uh, celebratory in a sense to, to feel that uh, just last year at this time, the small community here did celebrate Passover, but it was just in a different in a different way that now is being celebrated. Right. Uh, because now not only we are celebrating the holiday, but we are celebrating who we are as Jews. And we are celebrating the Jewish religion, and not just us, but the people that, that live with us here in this country and in this region. We're celebrating what, Judaism, what right. Judaism is and what Jewish people are. Well, again, we wish all you, all of you there, a happy uh, Passover. Rabbi Dr. Eli Abadi in Dubai, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, and happy.